Humans have been fasting throughout most of their existence on this planet. Nowadays, for most Americans fasting consists of the grueling three to four hours in between their bowl of heart-healthy breakfast cereal or a muffin and their sandwich for lunch. This was not the case in our not very distant past. Back then, good old-fashioned fasting likely consisted of a lack of food for a large portion of the day or even several days fasting from breakfast to lunch was a walk in the park. Fast forwarding several hundred centuries, a recent hot topic has been one of trying to discover methods to starve cancer cells, whether through carbohydrate restriction, calorie restriction, a ketogenic diet, or fasting, as has been discussed in the recent study entitled Fasting Enhances the Response of Glioma to Chemo and Radiotherapy. In this study, the authors attempt to increase our ability to kill glioma cells, the pesky brain tumors that are exquisitely resistant to most treatments, including chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and surgery. They also appear to have microscopic tentacle-like extensions and therefore are difficult to resect surgically. As the process of uprooting these tentacles would take out precious brain tissue as well. Thus, a method to help treat these pests is desperately needed. After millions of years it appears that nature may have been providing us with this treatment we just never knew it. In their study, Safdie and Brandhorst tested the effects of starving both cancer cells and normal cells without food for 48 hours. This was no modern day fast, at least for us Americans, and it was performed in the face of chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which may be a daunting task for most cancer patients. What they found was that the fast-sensitized mouse, rat, and human glioma cells to the treatment with chemoradiation, it resulted in significant killing of the cancer cells. They also found a significant decrease in blood sugar and IGF-1 in these animals during the fast and suggested that this may have played a large role, as we have discussed before here and here. An interesting twist to their findings is the fact that while fasting may sensitize the bad guys to treatment, it appears to spare our good cells from much of the toxicity of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Other words, when they decrease the amount of available sugar available to cancer cells, cell death significantly occurred in these cells with no change in the normal cells exposed to chemotherapy. The fasted mice also experienced delayed tumor progression and lived significantly longer. Not a bad result from simply removing food for a couple days. For mice who have breast cancer and undergo nutrient restriction overall or alternate day fasting, radiation therapy works significantly better to slow tumor growth and downregulate vital cancer pathways. Like many cancer studies, if it helps chemotherapy or radiation therapy to kill cancer cells, it likely helps those of us without cancer to ward it off. Fasting is no different, some have even recommended alternate daily fasts for health benefit. Though that may be somewhat difficult to get most of us to follow, 